Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat and we're back for the 50 stack challenge. I am so enjoying this and I thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. It's been so fun to see what everybody is making. Thank you for participating. Um, if this is the first time you're seeing anything about this and you need more information, what uh, we are doing is <clears throat> taking a whole stack of guest checks if you don't have guest checks or can't get guest checks or whatever, you can use a plain piece of paper for your background. It, it doesn't matter. It's just this is how it started was I had a whole stack of guest checks that I wanted to use. So um, you can use whatever you like as your background. I have people using envelopes, uh, pieces of paper, receipts, whatever. Use whatever you want as the background. It just started as a guest check. So anyways, um, you're taking uh, two guest checks per week for a total of 25 weeks to get a stack of 50 pieces of ephemera by the time we're done. So each Monday, which is today, I will draw two prompts and they're basically one word prompt. Like last week we had index card, which is obviously two words, but you, you see what I'm saying? It's only one item. It's not uh, multiple items. And then you just need to use that one item on uh, your guest check. So we have two, so I'm obviously doing two guest checks. This was the first guest check I did, and paint was the second guest check I did. Red was the first, paint was the second, okay? So that's what I'll do each week. So then each week you're gonna make your two guest checks and we'll just keep trucking along for 25 weeks. You can start at any point. You can start today. You can start a week from now. Uh, whatever it doesn't it doesn't make any difference it's just going to take you 25 weeks um to do them all unless you try to do like extras in a week to get caught up or whatever and that's fine too you can do it however you like okay so um for example for week one this was week one i chose red and paint so i have um the red in this guest check but red's not the only color i have and i need to point that out as well I know when I did black this last week, I used all black. You don't have to do that. You can use black and another color. You could use, you know, a black bow or a black uh, flower, I don't, whatever. Um, and then everything else could be something different. It, you just need one of that item. I just chose to do more black on this last one. And this one does have quite a bit of red with the ladies dressed with um, red, you know, hat dress lots of red flowers here the little girl so um, yeah definitely used quite a bit of red and then this one I used paint so I used iridescent um, paint to get the colors on this guest check okay I think you get it I think you get it and then so for blue and this is another example of a color I did use pretty much all blue on this guest check you don't have to do that you just need one blue item that's that's the only requirement. It, of course, if you choose to do a lot of blue or orange or whatever, that's totally fine too. I just don't want you to feel like, oh, I had some people say black's not really my color. You know, I, I don't know how to use it. Even if you put like these black numbers on there, that counts because, you know, you're using black. So that's really all it is. So this, um, the second week it was blue and orange. This is really just meant to be fun. So don't like feel like, oh, I don't have that. I can't do that. I, you know, it's none of that. It's just um, meant to be a fun thing to do and to build up some ephemera is really what we're trying to do. So don't feel like it's daunting or um, you can't do it. So this one was fabric. So my background is pretty much entirely fabric here. But again, you could just use one piece of fabric, one little piece, that's all. Okay, and then pocket for this one. So I have my little pocket here that these little cards are going into. So super fun. And you can um, use the guest checks however you like if you want to make them similar like my friend um, Tammy at Lou for Fru Studio. She is doing each week she's doing two guest checks that kind of match each other because she's putting them side by side in a book so when you flip open to that page you're going to see the two sort of matching even though they have different prompts they kind of go with each other so or you can do them like i'm doing them all different because i'll probably use them in different journals so um that's it's all up to you how you want to interpret 
So this one, number seven, this is week three, number seven was lace. And number eight was vellum or tracing paper. And my vellum or tracing paper, it's kind of hard to see because I did print on the vellum uh, design. And so it's, it's kind of a darker one than I probably should have done. But anyways, this is vellum, this pocket. So lace and vellum. And then up to week four now, which was this, you know, last, the last time we did the challenge. Um, this is like, this is what I was talking about. I have black, so pretty much everything on there is black, but you don't have to do it that way. Just one black item is fine. And then index card. So my index card is right here, and then I used the piece that I cut off and just turned it into a little tag as well. So that is what we have. So now we're going to draw and see what we got for 11 and 12. Can you believe? Already, see it goes fast. Just stick with it and truck along and it goes real fast. So number 11 will be packing paper or masking paper. Just any kind of, um, you know, like brown paper. You could even use a brown paper bag if you want to do that. Um, it can be the gray paper, like what I used to do the mark making last week on um, just any any kind of packaging paper. If you got it in a package or even if you purchased it on a roll because masking paper for painting comes on a roll. So um, yeah, how, however you want to do that. You know what I mean by packing or masking paper. The kind of brown paper bag or you can use the gray also or green. There's green masking paper. So whatever you want. Okay. All right. For number 12, we have crimped paper. So I have an old paper crimper that, um, to make crimped paper out of, but it can also be, um, paper that's been folded accordion style or, um, just any kind of crimped paper. I've even seen it, uh, for packing, which is it's so weird that they came out together. But anyways, um, where the, the, it's little pieces that are going almost like crisscross to each other, if you know what I mean, that are kind of crimped. So, but I th consider crimped paper like you put through a crimper and it folds it kind of accordion style. So you can crimp your own, as in fold a piece of paper back and forth, just like, you know, this kind of thing and make your own crimped paper if you don't have a paper crimper. Of course, you can make these folds any size you choose. Um, or if you've already got crimped paper. So this kind of thing is what I consider crimped paper. Okay. So that's what we have and I will be right back. Okay, hello, hello, I am back. You can see I have all kinds of packing paper. Um, I don't know <laughs> what you'd call it, but packing paper. And let me see here. I'm gonna grab one of these pieces of plain paper because I don't care what the back looks like. I'm gonna do some collage onto this um, using all these different packing papers. I have like the green, um, painter's masking paper that comes on the roll that you can get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, this, as you can see the way it's wadded up, was actual packaging paper. This also came in packaging, that kind of gray newsprint that I've used um, to do the mark making on last week. I have some tissue paper that's in a um, natural or neutral, whatever color. Um, more packing paper but of a different color and thickness than this other one. And then this is also packing paper. So I'm going to set that out of the way because otherwise it's going to be crinkling and ruffling right in your ear. And we're going to do some collage. I need a new glue page and my glue stick. So how y'all doing today? I hope you're all fabulous. And then I, I know I'm doing this on a piece of paper and we're supposed to be doing the guest check thing, but I will be putting it onto a guest check. I just um, wanted to make this part first, but I have a problem because I don't know what I did with the guest check that I had. Hold okay, on, sorry about that. I picked it up with the packing paper when I put it down there. <laughs> 
apologize. That was like a durr moment, but anyways. So yeah, hope you're all doing good. I'm doing good. I'm just, uh, you know, doing my thing. Doing my thing that I do. I'm going to go ahead and just put a piece of this down first. We're going on white paper, so it's really not going to matter a whole lot. And I'm fine with the fact that it's wrinkly and whatever. So yeah, just uh, working today. Been cutting stuff on the Glowforge and um, trying to come up with stuff for this. It took me a, a minute, I'm not going to lie. I struggled a little bit. Uh, just, I don't know, wanted to do something different. So I was glad when I thought of this idea, which you will see. And I mean, I've done stuff like this before, so this isn't really anything new. And I don't care if it hangs off because um, we're not going to use this whole thing anyway. So because I'm going to cut it is why. And I do like these pieces wrinkled a little. I think that's a little more interesting, right? Sorry, I know it's probably real crinkly in your ear. Take that little bit off. This one was one of the perforated packaging papers. Those are fun to play with. They make great um, actual journal pages, or I've done little, little books with those. Uh, you can do a lot with packaging paper, so don't just throw it away. It's definitely very useful in journaling, journal making, junk journal making. <laughs> I like to wrinkle it. You don't have to wrinkle it, obviously. If you like a smoother finish, then you wouldn't want it wrinkled, but I like it like that. I love this gray newsprint, as you all know, because you've seen me play with it before. It's good stuff, and you can get a whole, you know, package of it at Walmart, so it's not like it's hard to find, or, and like this, this just came in a box, so that was a bonus. Already all wrinkled up, no less. And I might use some of the one that I've marked on, too. I'm going to do some layers here. So yeah, once again, if you missed the first part of the video, like you just skipped ahead, which is awesome and fine, um, we're for guest check number 11, we're doing packing paper, any, or masking paper, any kind of packing paper that you have is wonderful. This is like kind of crazy. It's almost like a really thick, almost like wax paper or something. I don't know. It's, and it has lines in it. Neat. Almost goes with the whole corrugated thing, but not technically corrugated, I guess. Not up here. Maybe I'll put it up there. I'm gonna bring back this one that I already got glue on. These are old pages, and I don't like to use them as much for glue pages because they crack when you fold them. But if I do a couple of them and then glue them kind of together whole, then it'll be fine. As in not folding when I say whole. If that makes sense. Want totally just wrinkles in one spot. Kind of want them more places. It's just going to give us texture. I'm gonna use, speaking of texture, I'm going to use some of this. This is going to be interesting to glue down. <laughs> That's the only thing with this. And since it's got kind of some gaps in it, um, depending on how far apart it's spread apart, I think I will um, put it over the top of other pieces. Oh, I need some of the green. That's what I need. 
I'm not going to push real hard on this because otherwise I'm just going to cut up the glue and it'll be going through all the holes. So I'm just going real light over the top of that. and some green. I just found out because I'm actually doing this video on Thursday. I'm so sorry to everybody in the UK about Queen Elizabeth. Oh, what a lovely, lovely, amazing lady. And just, I mean, yes, she, she had a long, happy life, but um, an eventful, happy life. But, uh, you know, huge loss. Such a lovely, kind, sweet lady, so at least from what I know. <laughs> but yeah, so sorry to everyone's loss on that. That's just so sad. So when I started the video, I hadn't heard the news. And then, since then, I have, and it's just, just so sad. But I guess we were all very, very lucky to have her, basically. So. All right. So just a little texture there. You can't see that a whole ton. I think I'm going to put another little piece of this somewhere. Maybe up across here. And I think I'll do some stamping on there. Oh, maybe let's use, sorry, I just throw that. <laughs> I kind of want to use a piece of this just for some interest. I think that'll be fun because that is packing paper. I'm going to go this way. Maybe we'll go that way. I'm just going to hop back and forth between these. Once they dry, they can be used still. Kind, lovely lady. Okay. And then, yeah, like I said, I'm going to do a little stamping. I feel like this down here needs a little, let's do this little squiggly piece of that. heard this morning that she was not doing well and I was worried that that might be the case okay let's do some stamping got it more on there than I did on the I just don't want the, the straight edges and the point is what I'm trying to avoid I didn't push hard enough before still kind of get the straight edge obviously from the book huh just push 
not on the back, I guess. getting it all over and it doesn't have to be all even or anything because I am going to cut this up so it's not um, it's not going to matter at all still need that <laughs> these are Tim Holtz stamps um, they came with a stencil they were gifted to me thank you Tammy do I have it upside down I think I do don't I I didn't even look at it I just started stamping Okay, I want some numbers, I think. Let's see, let's use this. These are just, um, I don't even know, they're numbers and math symbols. Um, I got those when I worked at an elementary school and they were gonna toss them out. So I was like, oh, I'll take them. <laughs> I guess for whatever reason, they weren't doing that. Or they weren't getting used, or I don't even know. But anyways, they were cleaning out and tossing out and whatever. So I glommed right onto those. Oh, there must have been metallic paint on those that I didn't clean off well. These are Tim Holtz again. And I don't, I, I know for a fact I'm not going to use all this, but I don't know exactly which parts will be seen when I cut it or whatever, so I'm just going for it. We're just doing all the stuff on it, on our packing paper. Can you guys see okay? I have a big mess, don't I? Now, when I'm done, I can still, even if, you know, I've cut what I'm going to cut out and I still have uh, parts left, um, I can just cut them into little bits, you know, to use on collage or whatever, so. Even if I don't use it today, I'll be able to use it at another time. finally cooled down where we're at um, a little bit you know not a ton but oh my goodness I could almost like smell fall in the air this morning and I don't know if you guys know what I mean but um, it's just you can feel and smell that kind of crispness that comes and oh it was delightful I am looking so forward to it I don't want it to be cold and snowing yet, um, or at all really, but just just a tiny bit of a cool down would be fabulous. <laughs> so very happy about that. Hopefully you're all um, having that a little bit too. I love this Tim Holtz tape, however, I do wish that you could tear it. That's like my only gripe. I absolutely love it because it's fabulous, but it just won't tear at all. It's 
that can it's canvas tape or whatever they call it, but man, I would just love if it would just tear a little bit. It won't. I'm just going to go put little bits of it here and there. Like I said, I have no idea what I'm even going to end up with. Just for some color here and there. I have the other one. Maybe I'll use a little bit of it too. I'm going to take the whole time doing this one and not have enough time to do another one. doing too awful. One more little bit here. looks kind of kooky but think about it when I cut it up like if I were to be cutting up tags or whatever with it um you could make some fun stuff with that so and I'm sure you all have seen stuff like this Gail Augustinelli does this type of um stuff all the time so well and a lot of people do so I'm sure you've seen it I'm gonna put that back later because it's loud and obnoxious uh we'll put this back in here Put it out of the way. Move our extra bits of packing paper out of the way. Okay. I put some fall stuff out. I don't know yet exactly what I'm going to do. But I have my guest check number 11, which is the packing paper one. And I'm going to cut a mushroom out of this, which you guys have seen me do before. If you watch my channel. Ah, sorry, I just bumped you. I need my good scissors. So basically what I do is just kind of decide where I want uh, or what I want for the top of the mushroom and then I just go for it. <laughs> and then whatever's left I will just, uh, like I said, I'll use it for something else. So. So I'm not worried about, oh, did I get everything or oh, what a waste or whatever, because um, I'll use it for something else. So and I didn't get a whole lot of backing on there. Oh, you know what would help is if I actually cut it to fit. <laughs> yeah, that'd help, Amy, um, to fit on the little guard here of the guest check. Wow. I really wanted that tape in there, I guess, is what happened. And I got no tape now. So we may cut another one. <laughs> I'm a dope. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the dope show because that's my show. Uh, yeah, I think I'll cut another one. Well, that was kind of probably a little bit of a waste, but let's see. We can add tape. That's not a problem. Okay. So let's see. I kind of want this for the, you know, the base of the mushroom. And like I said, I can use bits for clusters or whatever, so it's not a big problem if there's just bits left. That needs some glue. I 
and I feel like I need to add some of the other colors, which is fine. I can still do that. Okay, let's do some of this. I love my mushrooms, as you guys know. I love making these. They make me happy. Missed the glue there. And that happens a lot of times when you cut up these things. Um, you know, there's spot, spots where you didn't get much glue and it seemed fine, but then it lifts. So just fix them. It's not a big deal. Okay, let's put on some green since we kind of missed it there. And I think I'm going to crumple it and I'm going to stamp it. Just for some interest. Which side? There's like one side that's glossy and the other side is not. So. here. I don't know what is going on outside. I have my blinds closed because it gets so hot in the afternoon. The sun hits the front of our house, which is where my craft room is. So, but I can hear cars and all kinds of stuff out there right now. <laughs> I'm nosy, you see. So this is what you can do if you do a collage and then you cut it up and you're like, oh, I don't like that. There isn't anything good on it or whatever. Just uh, add some things to it you like it. Always love a mushroom. I did not like eating mushrooms when I was a kid, but as I've gotten older, I do like them very much. Ugh, got stuff all over me here. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Oh, some of that tape. Somebody was yelling. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> Where did I set that down at? I kind of like the, obviously, the one with the numbers, right? Surprise! I bet you're shocked. Do I ever get tired of numbers? Not really. I don't know why. I do if I have to do math, but to look at them, <laughs> no. <laughs> you can kind of fray this, so that is definitely an advantage. It will fray. Can do that. I wish it was still July. Well, I mean, I don't, but I do because that means my son would still be home. <laughs> That's how awful I am. I mean, it's fine. He's doing well and that's awesome. And we're doing fine. It's just, you know, you miss him. Those cute kids. I'm gonna do this just a little bit more because I like that shape on a mushroom. Oh, when we went to Alaska, we went on uh, an adventure hike. I think I talked about it. But anyway, pretty intense hike. But oh my gosh, so many cool mushrooms and things. It was very cool. I guess I am going to have to move that over. Yeah, that will work. That will work. And then I think I'll do some... 
more of the textured uh, packing paper on there. Luckily I have the next um, guest check all set out so hopefully it won't take me as long as this one. I kind of knew this one was going to take me a bit. But it's fun. But it's fun. Kind of just take it all the way down across all that there. Goodness, I'm already 25 minutes. I'm kind of going to stick that down in there, I think. So I need to see how high, because I want to see my 11. So let's pull this open just a little bit more. And we'll glue it down after. But right now, I'll use some of this too on here. Which way is it supposed to go? I guess it doesn't really matter. Packing paper is getting its workout today. I'll just trim off whatever is unnecessary. Let's do another little bit of this. Just a little bit more. Do I want to stamp this? I think that I do. Did I even get? Oh, I did get a little bit on there. And maybe we'll do this little number. hanging off all over the place. <laughs> okay. Now you're going to scoot down in there, I hope. a few stamps on that background there. Our topper. We just need to see the 11 over there, that's all. And that needs a little something right there. How about some of this?
So this is our packing paper, number 11 packing paper, or um, painter's masking paper, or what, whatever. Whatever it is you have, just use it. Trim the sides here. Could wrap them around, but I'll just trim them. And then I'm gonna add a little Tim Holtz spray. This one is Shabby Shutters. I'm gonna try not to get it on everything, but I probably will. Because that's what I do. Let's go this way. And then maybe, do we want like a butterfly or something maybe? I don't use a whole lot of butterflies, but every once in a while they, they fit. They kind of match as well. There's like a little extra on there. Whoopsie. <laughs> it's not gonna do it. Just wanted a little more on there. I don't know. Ooh, this beetle's cool. Everybody's like, no, use the, use the butterfly. <laughs> right? Eh, I like that one. Let's use that one. this glue is gonna make me crazy sorry this is gonna be a long one today what are we at 33 hopefully we can get the other one done but it was fun right <laughs> you're like sure <laughs> fun Okay, I'm just going to set these out of the way instead of fiddling with them right now. I will get to it in a minute. There we go. There we go. There is our packing paper or... Uh, what do you want to call it? Papers, uh, painter's masking paper. Why can't I remember that today? I'm just like total blank every time I go to say that. I'm just throwing stuff on the floor. I'm going to have a lovely mess to clean up. All right. Not that that would be new. Now we're going to switch gears 100% here and go to Christmas, if you can believe it. I just thought, mm, I might as well make a Christmas one because, you know, it'll come in handy later. So that's what we're gonna do. So for the next one, it was crimped paper. So what I did is I found this um, little, like skinny cluster that I made probably last Christmas and I used most of it, but there's a little bit of it left. So I ran it through my crimper. And if you don't know what a crimper is because you're new to paper crafting, this is a paper crimper. And I know it's old school and everybody's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you dug that thing up. But they're really actually pretty cool. 
especially for what we do, I feel like. Let me grab a scrap if I can find one. So what you do is just uh, put your paper in. And if you don't have a paper crimper and you're like, oh, well, great, now I can't do this. Just you can use a, um, what do you call it? And you just do that. And then it crimps your paper, see? So it gets all the little ridges on it. Um, your scoreboard and just score it like whatever it is, an eighth or a quarter of an inch and fold it, which I know is a pain, or just fold it back and forth like I showed you um, before I started this portion of the video. So anyway, that's what I did. Um, it can be crimped, you know, book page. I crimped this piece of book page that I put some gesso over and I'm gonna use that. So I kind of got these two pieces ready to go. They're gonna be a pocket. And then I have some of my snowflakes. I have, I think this was from Gail Augusta Nellie's. I'm not positive, but I think it's her um, postcards. I had it already cut out in my uh, stuff, so that's why I'm not really positive on that. Oh, I need to ink this around the edge. And cut the corners. Sorry. You guys are like, I thought we were done with that one. We are, we are, I promise. Just let me get this. Right, there's that. Now we're gonna do the same to this one. And I got this little cutter on Amazon as well. But you know, you can find the crocodiles and all those kind of things. I think at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, you can probably find things like that too. So it's nothing fancy. Okay, I am going to ink this just a little bit on the white so that the crimp, the little crimpers show up <laughs> a little more. The ridges. It's like having ruffles. <laughs> Anyways, you can make your little crimps however you like and they don't have to be perfect and don't worry about it. Just have fun. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of put some of these snowflakes on this so that even though I'm putting this piece over, you'll still see a little something on there. So both my pieces of paper are crimped. I mean, really crimped paper can mean anything, dog-eared, um, you know, lots of things. So if you don't have a crimper, really just don't worry about it just fold fold the paper however I'm gonna actually come out a little further because I can trim that off if I want to and these snowflakes I would um, hopefully by the time you see this video I will have them back in my shop I'm gonna work on getting some of them cut I had them in my shop last uh, you know sort of winter Christmas time um, and then I didn't do them for a while because you know we were done with we were done with the snow thing, but now we're moving back into the snow thing. So I think I will go ahead and cut some more. Cause I know everybody's starting to ramp up for holiday crafting, so good to have them in there. Ah. And they will be the same ones as last year. So if you got them last year, they're not different. They're gonna be the same designs. I was gonna do new ones, but I just haven't had time to do that and all the other stuff that I've been doing for Halloween and whatnot. Sorry, it takes my concentration to do that. <laughs> I would just leave them hanging off like that, but I'm gonna, like I said, this is gonna be a pocket, so I don't really want to uh, have them get ripped or something. That one's probably fine, I think, because it's a little bit thicker. 
I don't think it'll be a problem. But it might look kind of weird, huh? So that's just going to tuck in there like that. That's all ready to go. This I'm going to rough it up a little bit more. And this is just a strip of paper and I have glued bits of fabric, music page. These are just little um, Christmas words and I'm not exactly sure where I got those because like I said, this was already all made up. Uh, I said fabric, right? That's part of one of my digitals that has like the pine looking plant on it. Um, and then you just run a stitch down through it. That's all that is. And then I think I'll put this cute little girl, because she's so happy, right there. And that's going to be that. So this I'm just going to glue along the top. And this is pretty fragile, so we're going to put a good amount of glue on it. And really, as long as I have my number 12 up there, I'm good. Whoops, whoops, Jiminy. Scoot it over a little bit more. I'm not going to have a pocket left by the time I'm done. I'm making a mess. Okay, and then this one I'm going to kind of come out a bit like I had showed. I do want to anchor on this one a little more down here at the bottom. And this one can go all the way glued because I glued that pocket basically shut. But you could go all out with the crimping, you know make it a lot more obvious. I didn't make it super obvious, but it's crimped. It is crimped. If I squish it a little, it'll look a little more crimped. I don't know if this one's Gales or not. I just can't remember. You know, you cut this stuff out and it's in your little box for the next year and it sort of becomes a blur. But anyway, that's going to go down in there. Any little Christmas postcardy type thing would work. She's so cute. I do cut off the word stocking there, but it's fine. It's fine. I don't know why, but I seem to be making one uh, guest check with a pocket and one without every challenge. That's not on like a thing I'm planning. I just keep doing it. <laughs> they just seem to work out that way. It's fun to have one at the pocket though. They're not going to end up together anyway, so I guess it really doesn't make any difference. All right, so for crimped paper, we have our crimped paper in the background here, and this uh, little strip was also crimped. It's kind of hard to tell, but it was. And then for our packing paper, we have our mushroom. I might spritz this one with a little bit of the blue. Let's cover her little face. I don't want blue dots on her face. But a little blue might be kind of nice. This one, oh, this one kind of gets wound up. It's very volatile. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, sprays a lot. I held it too close, but that's okay. Except I don't want it on her face. Okay, there she is. 
And then our little card will go in here. Okay. So we have our packing paper and our crimped paper. And I hope you can see kind of the crimps in that paper. It is a little bit hard to tell, but it is crimped. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I hope that you join in if you haven't yet. Definitely do because it's just a lot of fun. That's all you got to do. The one item crimped paper as long as you've got one piece of crimped paper on there you're set uh, packing paper seriously if you just use one piece of packing paper that's good that's all that's all the challenge is but yeah you can use as much or as little as you want all right so i hope you enjoyed it and we'll chat again soon love you guys bye